Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's May 14th, 2024. It's in the afternoon. It's uh, actually in in the lower 80s uh, Fahrenheit uh, right now. Uh, Thea and I just got back from uh, on a book run and uh, trying to decide what to try and accomplish and I'm a little bit pooped out. So I thought what I'd do is give you a, a, an update on the gardens and all. But I've got to say, things have really changed over the last last week. You can see a lot of the uh, the green is coming back. Most of the trees are leafing out. They're still, yeah, you know, they're like the honey locust. The locust trees still have to leaf out yet. Uh, the oaks are just starting to to leaf out. Uh, the mulberries are just starting to leaf out. Our sassafras are oh about a week of leafing out so far. And all of our maples are are in route to leafing out. So pretty exciting seeing the color changes. Uh, most of the geese have had their goslings, so they're all over the place around here, which is like heaven. A little bit of paradise here. And uh, so enough of jibber jabbering. Let's go ahead and take a look at the western garden plot. Uh, I did come in several days ago and did some weed whacking. Uh, because we haven't had a chance to do the weeding around the plants the, uh, at all yet. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at things. So the blueberry plants are looking great. The bees have been very, very active with the, all the blueberry plants. You can see some of them already starting small, small berries. Some are a little bit later. It's going to be a bit of time before they, they do it. The hascaps or hiscaps or honeyberries, they're doing quite well. Now some of them already have little berries on them. Uh, not this one. But the thing about the hascaps or the honeyberries is uh, they're sort of hidden. The, the berries, you can maybe see them there. Just starting to get the berries there. So uh, they will, will go ahead and produce their, their flowers and the berries at different times, which is really interesting. Or the blueberry patch here. The hascaps or hiscaps, honeyberries. A lot of pruning to do on these, on everything. But as I always say, I'm just running a bit behind. Then we get down here to the uh, thornless uh, blackberry plants. Uh, I weed whacked in here and destroyed some of the ones that were tip rooting, unfortunately. Destroyed the tip root part of it. And some of them haven't done as well. So this, I really need to work on the soil over here. I got to increase the fertility. So we did grow uh, scarlet red runner beans and we had all different varieties of plants in this area. But I built it up over time with a lot of wood chips. So it's, it's really, uh, uh, you know, has uh, nitrogen and it probably has many of the uh, micronutrients lacking as well. So that's one of the things is they just don't look as good as they, they usually do this time of year. Uh, but I'll take that as a learning lesson and I haven't pruned them. I haven't put down the weed mats. I haven't got the drip tapes down set for them yet. Well, I have the drip tapes down, but I haven't got the irrigation on. But uh, so lots of excuses and it's just not as uh, beautiful as, a, as they usually are this time of year with our when we had them up up front uh, before last year anyway. So a little disappointing that our, our thornless blackberry plants aren't doing as great. So I'll have to work on that. It gets added to the list. The list of things. Do you guys have lists? Does it drive you nuts? <laughs> or are you one of those free spirits that can just sit back and take it easy and just go with the flow? I've never been that person. So let's go over and see what's going on in the central garden. I had to rescue one of the little goslings I saw this morning. Uh, Mom and Dad with several of the babies were looking down in here into the canal. And uh, so I knew one of their babies went over the wall there and into the canal. So I came out with a net this morning and got the baby gosling out. Okay, here we are in the central garden plot. The uh, comfrey is doing really well. This is 
I really love this. This is Bach 14 Comfrey. It really suppresses the weeds. I think it's kind of attractive plant myself. Uh, now this, this growth here will go probably another week to two weeks and then fall over and the new shoots will come. So it increases fertility. It's kind of a pioneering um, deep mining plant that, uh, that actually builds soil gradually over time. And the Bach 14 does not self-seed, so it's all reproduced by the, uh, by the roots at all. And here's our garlic bed, one of the garlic beds. So these are permanent raised beds. Garlic are doing pretty well. There are a few weeds in here. We plant those between uh, Thanksgiving and Halloween. Those are the two uh, holidays here in the States that we plant them in between. So we have two beds, three rows in each bed. Now the deer walk through this the whole winter, so there's a few of them that are, that are missing in here. And then a half a bed, bed here, and the rest of these are the uh, Dutch red shallots. And so they're doing pretty well so far. Pretty happy with that. The weeds haven't been too bad. And another bed of the Dutch red shallots here. So pretty happy with that. Then you may recall we went ahead and got some uh, Norway uh, spruce trees, bought these, and we put them over here because the area uh, next to our property uh, is a gravel mine and they just did clear cutting. So one of our goals is to go ahead and, and reforest it with some evergreens along in there will be one of the things we're going to do. So they're doing pretty well. Pretty happy with it. I've got to get the fence up because the geese are occupying this area. Now, none of these plants would the geese bother me. And uh, our, just go down here the rest of the way. And then there's three Colorado blue spruce here. These are the blue spruces. And the rest I think are doing okay that are, that are up front that I planted by the spruce, spruce trees up front. And uh, what was I going to say? So I got to get the fence up around here. Oh, that made me think. Uh, our last fall, we transplanted a lot of our uh, horseradish, and I made some trenches with the excavator, and then filled those in with soil, because that's all gravel up in that area. And I really didn't haven't developed it, developed that area where it was the soil I'm talking about. And uh, then we use our leaf mold compost and uh, sand in the base, but then leaf mold compost to plant the uh, horseradish in and all of our oak trees. And now's the time all the oak trees are starting to leaf out. So this is the time, the ideal time for the deer to come over and just nip off all the tops of them. So I've got to get some, some fencing up for the various plants and we got to get some plants out here into the garden as well. So that's our central garden plot. That's where we're at there. Now we'll go over into our western garden plot. So the lavender, the always wants to talk about the lavender, the thyme, and the sage plants are all doing pretty well uh, each time around here. So there's our, our lavender looking pretty good so far, the thyme and our sage and so so far this is looking pretty good you know as always there's pruning to be done weeding to be done things to be done it's a story of my life and we got to get these scarlet red runner beans in soon get all the old vines off of here they're old uh, I did come through and did some weeding down in here and did a lot of weed whacking over here. So this is the trellis that will put the Scarlet Red Runner beans on. Every year we have those here. Uh, they're fantastic. I just love those beans. The butterflies, the hummingbirds, and other species as well love them, all the bees. Uh, this is the one of the rows of the uh, blueberry plants that I just transplanted a few weeks ago. So they're in here, and these are one of the rows of their uh, heritage red raspberry plants right in here. So we've got some new uh, root suckers that are coming off to the side, so we're going to pot those up 
and get those set. But two rows of the of the uh, raspberry plant. So I'm pretty happy with how they're doing, especially since when I took the uh, limbs off of this honey locust here, they just came down and crashed all over this. This was just before putting the blueberry plants in. So I have a little more weeding to do over here. Uh, these are the hascaps or the hiscaps or the honeyberry plants that are uh, their uh, stool layering or mound uh, reproducing. So by raising the soil up amongst the branches in here, each one of these branches where there was a leaf node will actually start to send out roots as well. So next year or even this fall, I can divide this into multiple little uh, plants themselves. And that's where we are here. This one, part of this one didn't make it, so I got to do some pruning. I got to get the uh, this area mowed down. Get the drip tapes hooked up. Some of our kale, we decided to have our kale that we overwintered. Still getting some of the kale off it, uh, but this this is going to flower and will seed, so we'll save our seed from this kale, these kale plants. So this is how much growth has happened since they broke, uh, since they really started shooting off after the winter months. So, and again, this is the place where the uh, Scarlet Red Runner beans will be. So it worked pretty well having the chamomile as a border here. So we're, 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 we're trying to decide what sort of living fence uh, borders we're gonna be put in different locations. So we're starting with some this is the place where the uh, sweet potatoes were and where they'll be growing again this season. And this is the place where the deer got in here and just climbed right up on here and ate all of the center row, which was the main area of our uh, strawberry plants. Now, I have to get some more gates. Now that that gate's up, that's fine. But the deer actually come through because they know they can get over in here. So I've got to get another gate up over in this section. One more thing to do. Same thing over here. I probably will put, put some hardwood cuttings over here. And let's see what we got here. Oh, these are some of the peach seedlings that are emerging. So these are uh, peach seeds that we save from our, our trees. And so these are little baby peach trees starting right here. Uh, this will be black locusts. It can take a whole year for the black locusts. They, you know, they need scarification and stratification. Stratification is going over a, a cold season. All scarification is disrupting the outer casing of the of the seed. So sometimes it takes a forest fire to to scarify it. Sometimes it needs rubbing and erosion those sorts of things and people you can put in boiling water but we just decided we put down the seeds here and see how they do and what's planted over here I think these are some of our apple seedlings here so they're just starting to come up here and again uh, when you're doing growing fruit trees and uh, various fruit trees and nut tr uh, fruit trees yeah, there's going to be cross-pollination, so you're not going to get something. So let's say you had a, a Macintosh and you planted the Macintosh seeds. Wh whatever uh, 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 beneficial insect that actually pollinated uh, that flower that produced that seed is going to determine what the cross is going to be like. It's, it's a little exercise in Mendelian genetics. So... Not too much emerging here, although this is, these are apples here, I think. I, we'll have to see. And so far, just weeds over in this one, I see. That'd be weeded. And I don't, I don't... Jeez, are these hazelnuts? I think these are hazelnuts here. Is there a label? Yes, hazelnuts. So we got some hazelnuts just starting to shoot up here. This one isn't planted yet. This one isn't planted yet. And Thea did plant something here. What's in this one? More peach peach seedlings and all. And these are a couple more of the hiss caps or hascaps. And I've got to fill some more soil in here and some mulch this right up 
because that's what we're going to do and I need to do some pruning here as well but uh, that's how we can propagate and make more of these little babies but it's always nice to see new babies whatever kind of whatever species the babies are so let's go up front Thea is always working uh, spending time in the front garden which is where the Japanese maples are and where the hostas and my brother Jim, he gave us a lot of his irises, so they're just getting ready to bloom pretty soon. So pretty excited about that. I did dig up some tulips, some alliums, some different uh, uh, pretty flowers, basically, and related to the to the onions and, and shallots and all. Um, so I did dig up some of those, so next season, they should, Thea planted those out here, so they should do pretty well as well. And the deer come out here every night and eat things down. But the, So some of the hostas are still doing pretty well down in here. So, looking pretty good. The fiddlehead ferns are doing great. Pretty happy with that. Uh, these are a lot of the either daffodils or, or uh, tulips. I can't remember what, what, where Thea put everything right now. We got the sedum there, and uh, we had some hyacinths there that have since done finished. But these are some of my brother's uh, beautiful irises. Pretty excited about that. Some thyme here, oregano. And I need to do some weed whacking around here. Most days I try to spend an hour or two weed whacking. Oh, he's got a couple of cute little frog steps down here. And I really like how the Japanese maples are looking. Let's see if I can get the camera to point at it. There's one tulip. I've always loved tulips. So really, really happy with how this looks. We got a little place to sit. So you can talk me into coming out and sitting for a little while. That would be nice. Uh, I've got a lot more earthworks to do up there where the grapevines were. We've had so much water and the little goslings get a little nervous yet. They, have, they aren't quite used to us. So got some more work to do up there. And I've got firewood to get, to get uh, taken care of as well. So I think that's about it. It's our tour of the garden and uh, really happy with how things are looking uh, so far given the amount of effort that we've had to be able to put into the gardens. And Thea's done a great job and shout out to my brother Jim. Thank you so much for the, all the beautiful irises. Uh, it really does look, look great when they're, I just like even seeing them before they flower. So I guess that's it for today's video, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you think this was cool. And by all means, folks, stay safe and take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye now.